Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Before I continue, be sure to hit that subscribe button to get more content and opinions on films, books, and TV shows from me. So today, I will be talking about the first book I've read this year. Well, for fun. Uh, I'm not counting Jane Austen's epistolary novel Lady Susan because I had to read that for my Austen class. So today's book is the Cousins by Karen M. McManus. If you don't know McManus, she's the author of the best-selling One of Us is Lying novel, which had been developed as a series on Peacock. Side note, I actually still have to watch it and see like how it fared as an adaptation. Anyway, The Cousins seemed intriguing enough because it's about these cousins who were invited to work at their grandmother's resort. Their grandmother uh, disinherited their parents before they were born, and their parents insisted that they go. No ifs, ends, or buts. So what follows is a mystery that they try to uncover about why their grandmother disinherited their parents and uncover more about their family's past. So we'll begin first with my spoiler-free thoughts. Listen. I loved McManus's books. One of Us is Lying got me out of my reading slump in high school, and Two Can Keep a Secret was pretty darn good too. But this one fell quite short of my expectations. Yes, there were great plot twists, but they seemed to be written more for shock value than emotional value. Like, the pacing was slow as well, and it just felt like not a lot was going on. And with most mystery novels, you'd want protagonists that are proactive. The proactivity of these characters don't really happen till later in the novel, and only one character was pretty proactive, and that was Aubrey. As with Mc McManus's other books, the story is told in first-person point of view, but each chapter follows a specific character which allowed for a more diversified storytelling rather than being limited to a single character. As anyone who's seen my previous videos know, I'm not usually a fan of first-person point of view, but I didn't mind it in this book mainly because um, it was also told uh, from the perspective of different characters. So the book also did something that I wasn't expecting, and that was having uh, two timelines. Most of the story was told from the first-person point of view of Millie, Aubrey, and Jonah. But there were a few chapters that were dedicated to the past, uh, specifically 1996, and was told from a third-person limited point of view, Allison's, who was Millie's mother. I thought that, that was pretty cool, and it was able to give characters like Allison and her brother Archer some depth, even if they weren't the main characters. I will also say this, the inclusion of the family tree at the beginning of the book, it helped a lot. Especially because Millie, Aubrey, and Jonah's parents all had A names and I was like getting confused. Like I kept going, okay, whose kid was Anders again and whose was Adam's? So yeah, um, that's it for my overall spoiler-free thoughts. And we're now entering the spoiler zone. So don't watch this part of the video if you haven't read or haven't finished reading the book yet. The first thing I would like to address, the really weird almost venturing into incest romance. So one of the first plot twists to be uncovered was that Jonah is not the real Jonah's story. He was an imposter, whose name is actually also Jonah, sent by the real Jonah Theodore JT story because JT wanted to go to summer camp. But before we found out that uh, this Jonah, Jonah North, was an imposter, there was a really weird moment when he's on the ferry to his grandmother's island and he sees Millie and like there was an instant attraction between them. And I was like, oh no, please don't go down this route. <laughs> then it was revealed that Jonah was an imposter and not really Millie's cousin, so it wasn't as weird but it's still weird as hell like especially since other than aubrey no one knew that jonah was an imposter and get this jonah and millie were caught kissing at a gala their grandmother was hosting so yeah secondhand embarrassment and it made me cringe um the second thing was like the plot twist at the end 
bear with me because this is gonna get like telenovela-esque. So as it turns out, their grandmother Mildred had actually died 24 years ago and her assistant, Teresa Ryan, was pretending to be Mildred. Why? Because she wanted to get revenge on Mildred's children. Teresa had a son, Matt, who was the same age as the Story uh, children. So Matt had a rivalry with Anders' story because there was a love triangle between Matt, Anders, and Anders' um, on-again, off-again girlfriend, Kayla. Allison, the only Story daughter, had a summer fling with Matt that resulted in her pregnancy. But she miscarried and Matt, like, kind of ghosted her before she even found out she was pregnant. So Anders knew about the pregnancy and the miscarriage and was really pissed at Matt again for like kind of having a thing with Kayla like immediately after he had a fling with Allison. So he tricked Matt into going into the ocean causing him to drown. Adam was there and let it happen. Um, although Matt's death was ruled like as an accident. But apparently Anders got drunk and told Kayla the truth. Kayla then told Teresa about it. And around this time, like Mildred like died in her room from like natural causes. So Teresa decided to get revenge on Mildred's children by cutting them out of their fortune and like dividing it up between her, the lawyer, and the physician who were in on the cover-up. So Kayla got curious about the reason for the disinheritance, which led to her being killed by the lawyer. <sighs> okay, so imagine you were me and you were reading this. Freaking bonkers. Like I don't know, I get being mad that your kid was killed, but she also ruined the life of the grandkids who literally did nothing wrong. Like, it's just, it's bonkers. Like, I'm gonna keep using that word to describe this book. Bonkers. So yeah. During your first read, it's insane and shocking, but it feels comically insane, you know? Like, the plan was just whack. I don't know, I guess I kind of thought it'd be more interesting, but the pieces didn't even start fitting till near the end and we only get the full story during the confrontation and so it felt more like an info dump than an unfolding, which is what I'm used to when I'm like reading mystery novels. And then the ending. Okay, McManus is usually like pretty good at giving cliffhanger endings because she adds suspense and shock at the end of her books. This book ended with Teresa's sister Paula, who was pretending to be Teresa while Teresa was pretending to be Mildred, by the way. Anyway, um, we know Paula was in the wind and she sent a postcard to Jonah North, the imposter, not the cousin, basically promising that she would ruin Anders' story's uh, latest venture. And she signed it off with a starry family motto, family first, always. So yeah, the use of the family mo motto, it, like it made me shook for like a second, but it didn't really add anything else to the story. Cause like, again, we already know that Paula was like in the wind. Like it would have been something else if like they presumed she was dead and then turns out she was alive, but no, we knew she escaped before the estate burned down. So to sum up, The Cousins was an okay story. It had an intriguing premise and had potential, but because of the pacing and so much information being crammed and dumped, it fell a little flat. While the plot twist seemed shocking at first, they didn't seem to make sense and the conclusion to the mystery was a little disappointing. The book had its moments, but overall I don't think I'd read the book again. I feel like it would have been a lot better if the story was stretched to be like a two-part or even a trilogy because then the mystery could have been built upon and enhanced and not rushed, especially like near the end. And that's the wrap on The Cousins. My next video will either be on the book Red, White, and Royal Blue or the film 10 Things I Hate About You. Haven't decided yet, but you know what? They're both keeping up with the theme of February like being the month of love. So um, regardless of which video I choose to like do first, um, it will be up by early to mid-February, depending on my due dates for my tests and other assignments. Thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe.